Hello, my friend. Welcome. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Back to Me podcast. And this week you will find super interesting. I'm speaking with Cynthia McFarlane, who is a McMediate, Miss McMediator. And yes, I thought McDonald's at first as well, but it's just a play on McFarlane and she's a mediator and she's a coach who teaches you how to take control of your own situation in advance, hopefully, before it becomes a problem and you end up in court, and how to really empower yourself legally so that you're in your best space and you're doing awesome. And how amazing is that? Have a listen. Let me know what you think, of course, and take care. I'll see you soon. Hi, my friends. Welcome. This is the Back to Me podcast, and this is Heather, and I am super excited that you're here. You are going to hear some tips and some tricks and some ideas to help you live your happiest and healthiest self. I call it Back to Me because when you are taking care of yourself, Back to Me, then you can take better care of others, and we can all make the world a better place. This is Wellness Your Way, and I am super happy that you're here. Hello, my friend. Welcome. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Back to Me podcast. And this is another week with another amazing human being. And today I'm talking to Cynthia McFarlane, Miss McMediator. (laughs) It's so funny. I was afraid I was going to say that wrong. Um, Welcome, Cynthia. Thank you for joining me. Hi. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I think we're going to have to have some explanation of Miss McMedi- Miss McMediator <laughs> <laughs> and what that is. I guess it's a play on my name, a play on words in terms of my name. So I am a mediator, I'm a lawyer and a coach, a legal coach. And the uh, mediator part is, is there and McFarlane right. is the beginning of that, Miss McMediator. <laughs> mediator and it's interesting like you've got all of those pieces combined together of the coach and the lawyer and the mediator yes it's okay and um how did you how did you end up branching those three together oh well i had been a barrister um that's a lawyer who wears a wig in the uk okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been one for 18 years and um, I then after about 10 years I decided I wanted to be a mediator internationally um, so I continued doing that and the legal side of, of things I'm sorry if the noise is a little bit hard here but I'm hoping you can still hear me I can still hear you yeah um, I'm an also I've also been a legal coach um, more recently in years. So I combine the three things in order to deliver a holistic package to my clients. Okay, and so so you added the coaching on um, because you found that you, the mediation wasn't enough? How did that get layered <laughs> on there? It's interesting you said that it wasn't enough. I, I think we, as women, constantly think of that, that we're not enough in terms of yeah. the way the media portrays us and society, and you know, um, and maybe it's a lot of that going on behind the scenes, if I'm honest. Um, so maybe I felt that a lawyer wasn't enough for me. Um, great. But, um, yeah, so it, it started that really, really, after about 10 years, I found as a barrister that people were getting res- people were going to court for things that weren't really the way they wanted res- to resolve things. And so I felt mediation kind of was the way forward for some of the clients I had. Um, I won't go through the legal system over here in any great detail because it's probably going to be <laughs> a minefield for some to listen to. But um, when I'd get instructed or representing people we get referred by a solicitor over here traditionally and I'd get to court and find that the client didn't really want to be there they thought the judge could give a lot of things that the judge 
didn't have the power to to give so I wanted to be more conciliatory I wanted to look at amicable settlements there were a lot of people who wanted to continue relationships whether that was business whether that was personal Um, they wanted apologies they wanted a lot of different things that we don't always get as you know in courts yeah Um, and so I rather than fighting at every point I found that sometimes fighting wasn't the right action to take Um, not always but sometimes and that mediation would be it Um, then more recently with life and how life evolves um, I was into personal development and I found that I wasn't fulfilled enough if I'm honest after a number of years Um, and I wanted to do things differently. I got a little bored, Heather, in terms of oh, the no. work I was going. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine any of that would have been boring. But <laughs> <laughs> So, and I like to change things up. So I decided then to do some personal development work on myself um, in terms of coaching. I, I had lots of different coaches to help me in various aspects of my work, not just... Um, reading about business but also how to improve my life um and i found that the entrepreneurial way was the what what i wanted to invest in but i also wanted to live a a full life and my passions which are riding horses um also building a family i'm in my 40s now i'm 43 this year um and so I, i wanted to build a legacy myself for my family I guess and I had lots of mindset issues as you you may do a lot of cultural issues a lot of um, people telling you the way things should be done Um, and I took what I really wanted to do going back to my childhood I guess if you think about what you people tell you you can't have yeah and said I want to have it (laughs) and so we are living now in a country home, um, a Victorian period property in the countryside when I lived in London up to um, 2021. And then during the pandemic, I decided I'm, I'm going to just live the life I want. I've been looking at this for years. Um, health issues also led to, to that over, before the pandemic, just shortly before. Um, I'm very cutting this down in a very That's okay. <laughs> For you but this is how it all it all relates everything it all comes together <laughs> it is yes and um yeah we I'm, i can you know i can own horses rather than loan them i can build the legacy i want for my family whether they're here right now or whether they are to be there in the future um and so yeah this is the purpose and this is kind of the the reason i got to build things for other people Right. Um, and that's why I have this legal program that I'd love to talk about with you and yeah. build, build on that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I can remember all those things when I was a kid, the things we couldn't do. And <laughs> I had always wanted to learn to ride horses and I never could. Nice. So maybe I'll have to add that onto my grown up list now. You should. You should. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I mean, I was in my 20s as a barrister and I thought, you know what, I'm not just doing it. it on the summer occasionally you know I want to learn properly I want to do dressage I want to do the local competitions and yes it was late then I guess my 20s to start doing it properly but I thought this yeah why not so it's never too late come on I don't think so and and that's it I love this I love the what you're building here and what you're um bringing to other people's lives with this podcast because um to me a lot of the the program I have is about people stepping away from their day-to-day business, the humdrum, the things that people expect them to do, and living their passions themselves, you know, away from And looking out longer, right? So it's that idea of, this is today, but it doesn't have to be like this every day, Yeah. right? And I mean, last week's was a, last week I spoke to a financial, no, in February I spoke to a financial advisor, Mm -hmm. and, um, it was that same kind of idea that women have a different way they relate to money and think about money and women don't always have that long view of, I mean, you, you're calling it legacy, but 
and it's so so true i mean you don't always think about that out that far and it's so interesting about how you've incorporated that into a program what did you what, it's called what legacy yes. no what's oh tell me again what the, it's called. no no that's it's, it's, it's the lawpreneur is is another name that i've put together i guess lawpreneur does exist for other people i appreciate that but it's just seemed to fit um, and it's a legacy transformation program um yeah, my dream clients are people who want to do more. They want to do more for themselves. They want to have self-care. They want to not necessarily build it for their family. It might be that they want to do that, but it, living the life now. They may want to ride horses like me. They may want to travel, um, what, leave a name for themselves, whatever that means to them. And not having the weight, not waiting for it, but just living their lives. And, and that's... It, that's part of my framework. Um, they have this vision, it might be a childhood vision as opposed to a business vision, and the two things come together. Um, but they make sure that things are protected right. and lasting, knowing the legal ramifications of things in, an, in a fun way, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was thinking about the, what you were commenting about how when people get to court, they didn't want to be there. I always thought court was, you know, the last resort, <laughs> yeah, and it that be. <laughs> and that mediation was always the, a better option. So I I understand how you just went. This isn't the right place for this to happen. No matter what the legal system is, I, d I think court is the last place people want to be. Yeah, and, taking the power away from you doing right? that and, and giving it to empowered. some person sitting up there who doesn't know anything about you. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I like how you comment your comment on um, combining the freedom to live your passions with legal empowerment. So what do you think, what do you define as that legal empowerment aspect? So I think you need to know, you need to know areas that you don't know. Um, I try to put this as a picture like, into three parts. So you've got a lot of its mindset on the one hand, and that's the vision. That's your, what you want to do. I'm just putting a very basic um, That's okay. now and then you have the mediation part um, is empowering you in terms of the heart if you like to put it holistically and it's um, the emotions it's your values the things that you want to protect and the things that being the human in you that's another part of the program and then the third part is the empowerment um, part and that is you being aware of what you need to be in terms of your legal dispute or potential dispute, the thing that can end your businesses or end your home, you having a home, or even your family breakdown, depending on on what um, issue you have. So it's empowering you legally. It might be that I'm empowering you to, um, I say, fight like a warrior. It may not be, <laughs> it may not be, fight as in we have to go to court. Right. But you're wearing, aware of what that legal part is. It may mean that you're fighting not to be in that position again because you have all the legal um, understanding, the legal understanding in respect to your dispute, and you may need to negotiate, and that might be fighting to avoid getting in that situation again or getting in a worse position in terms of costs. So there's lots of different parts. There's nine modules and wow. three modules in each part. Um, and I t meet the person where they are. It may mean that they want a part of that f for where they are. Or it may mean that we take 90 days working through. But I always like to start ideally with the mind part, which is the vision and um, looking back at what you... Because you, you may build a business um, or have a family life. And it may be very different now to where you expected it to be and your future may be very different as well and so I think working those three things together um, the body the the mind and the heart I think everything is holistic and you can use this program in every area of your life and for later on once you learn it right. so I love I love it so I'm very excited about this <laughs> <laughs> that's good I mean, if you weren't excited about it, nobody else would be either, right? That's so true, yeah. <laughs> and it's interesting, it's true. I mean, you don't, you don't know what you don't know sometimes. And 
you can't always know everything. Like, I'm not going to say that no. you should know everything because you would be paralyzed if you waited. But I can remember um, I knew a business owner whose partner had passed away suddenly and there was no there was nothing in the partnership agreement about how to handle it without um, really causing struggle for the surviving partner. So the surviving partner ended up really never making any money because he was constantly paying off the widow because yeah. they hadn't they hadn't really sorted out all the details of it before they just dove right in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where it's even even people I've advised people of this even if you're going to go into work with your very best friend in the whole world who you've known your whole life write it all down how everything's going to work and call yes. in <laughs> call in an expert Miss oh, McMediator <laughs> to help you <laughs> Thank you. because yeah, really me. you don't know what's going to happen you don't know how circumstances change from day to day over the years and if you don't uh, think in advance as much as you can, you do end up sometimes in that place you don't want to be. And I mean, yeah. maybe that's when you have to fight like a warrior. I mean, also just being an advocate for your own uh, person, I think sometimes, yes. right? I agree with that. And I wish a lot of people, I hope a lot of people hear this, what you've just said about being best friends. The, the amount of times I sat across in a mediation with two best friends and the, you know I'm in communities and they say oh no no this would never happen I would do it A, B, C and D way and then well yesterday I was like you know something happened here and it's just people change it's like relationships it's like loving relationships families may not be as perfect as you like you just never foresee everything and I think it's getting your ducks in a row um, there's nothing wrong in having an informed view of something and even if you don't want to act upon it at least you get those answers those questions answered yeah and I heard somebody refer to it they, we weren't talking about um, agreements we were talking about financials the, the ostrich syndrome with the, the head in the sand so if true. you don't look at it it won't, it won't happen I'm sorry <laughs> friends it can happen to anyone. I mean, people who are so madly in love get divorced. And exactly. people who have the perfect business idea and the perfect working partnership, sometimes things change and they don't. And, um, yeah, having all of that stuff thought out. And then it just takes off that pressure of, like, we agreed that this is how it was going to work in advance. So you don't have to fight it about it at the end of the day. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely right. And it, so it saves a lot of hassle. And the other thing is people think they've got lawyers. Um, are, do they have lawyers doing the right thing that they need? Oh, right. Because you could have people on retainer um, for a particular thing, but still have those other issues. And, and you also have um, people saying they've got protection for intellectual property or they've got protection for will, you know, wills. As you say, someone died, but there were still potential disputes because why are we still in court? Why do we still have these things? It doesn't mean right. that everything goes away. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just getting a full 360 degree understanding of what happens. So you can use that again if you need to, or just be aware of what things you need to be aware of and make so, the decision for yourself. So for you, legal empowerment is um, partly knowing what you don't know. Yeah. And yes. figuring out how what you need, who you need in the background. <laughs> I think that's right. I, th I think a lot of us, and including me, um, there's also, you know, it's asking for help. Um, but I also, I know a lot now that I don't, that I know probably less now. <laughs> I feel like I know less now, the older I am. And, but at least I know that I don't know something, you know, and I know that I need someone to help me to, to deal with that part. Whereas I used to struggle on my own, even think of bookkeeping, you know, right. for years I did it all on my own, thinking I had to know all this or I would have to read a book to do A, B, C and D. Now I know that, okay, they're over there, they're the experts in that area. I know I don't know it. And then you work out how you work with that person, whether that's in 
a group setting or a one-to-one -one setting, um, or it's just or might be reading a book. But where you can have the help and have go right to the source, I think these days it's better for me. I've got too many other things I want to do. I would rather ride my horse, <laughs> you know, than do have to get to down and dirty with those other things. You see. Well, it is true. I mean, I've always been a big fan of. Um, like work in your zone of genius so do the things that you're really good at and the things you're not good at or you don't want to do get somebody else to do them yeah <laughs> because yeah. in whatever way you can in whatever way you can I know a coach who she's a money mindset coach and she works very hard she loves what she does but she has someone who does all the cooking because she's like I don't have time I don't like cooking, so she just has a housekeeper come, someone who prepares the meals. And she said, that just frees up so much of her brain space. And I mean, yeah. that's, a, that's kind of a funny example, but bookkeeping is a really good example, how many people struggle with their bookkeeping and you could outsource it. And save money, I can tell you now, I, I know I've lost money um, from not doing that early enough. Oh, really? <laughs> and it might be a little bit, it might be a little bit of money, it may not be that much, but I know that if I had someone who was, that's their zone of excellence or genius, um, I could have probably saved a little bit. And that's the same. I'm the same with, as your, the person you mentioned about cooking, you know, and preparing a home. I don't worry about those things now. Um, whereas I used to, I spent a lot of time, I, I, I got to, I think I was um, too long getting to this place. <laughs> <laughs> I could have saved myself so much time. <laughs> Uh, you get there when you get there. I mean, we're we're always in a hurry, but True. I think that when we're ready for it, then yeah. then we do it. And yeah. sometimes the the sad thing is we are ready for it and we don't take that leap into it. And I guess that's where you bring in your money mindset aspect of your transformation program, or your, I, maybe it's not money mindset, just the mindset aspect. It, it is. It is mindset. Um, I, I think. There's so many things, layers, isn't there, under that. I think that's something I'm always still working on because I think though you get to a certain point and you know you've done a lot of work, there's always another hill to climb in, or you need to refresh and review things as well. Um, but yes, mindset's really important, definitely. I think um, even, so I think that part of uh, the way we work maybe it's a human thing maybe it's a society thing as we always think we could tick that off okay i fix that tick not realizing that it's you're never actually done <laughs> yes i wish we were but you're right, right. <laughs> yes. there's always there's always things to do there's and there's there's another uh i listen to so many podcasts it would make people bonkers but there was someone who said once you know she had conquered this mindset issue that she had. She said, it's done, yes, check. And then she hit another plateau and she said, damn, it's come back just in a new form. So it's like, <laughs> so she had done, she had taken care of, kind of peeled off a layer of it, got to another layer level of personal development and then she was blocked again because she needed to peel off another layer. So it's yeah. like, I think that constant and continual examination and being aware and asking the questions and uh, a, I think a big part of it is being open to something right yes I, and I think you mentioned earlier um, about being in the right place at that time or that's the step that's the place you're in I think negativity and judgment or may not even be judgment that presents itself with people in front of you now but you may have these stories in your or your previous history that tells you not to do these things I mean I remember even getting a cleaner <laughs> it took me a year so I thought I couldn't justify that right. you know, and, and, and then now I really need that <laughs> right but it, but I always have the you know cultural little stuff or your um you know grandparents I'm thinking oh well they might think that or not that they're around anymore but you have these people talking to you who from your past who have just you know did they do that would they have done that um yeah it's difficult to move forward sometimes but I think you have to get to the point where you're like well no I need to 
move forward. And that's actually beneficial to, to the rest of my family or my legacy and, and see how we've we've traveling, how we're traveling and moving moving on. Positively. Well, it's true. The, the stories that the stories that you hear when you're young or the impressions that you get when you let you're young, you think it's the truth because you don't know any different that it's mm. not. I mean, we used to, well, I still kind of believe in Santa Claus, but, <laughs> 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 but you know, you never would have questioned whether there was a man who could come down the chimney and deliver presents under the tree if the <laughs> Santa Claus was your jam. Um, and, and we, we question that one, but we don't question later on the, oh, I'm supposed to be the person who does all the cooking and cleaning. Oh, I am supposed to be able to do all this myself. I'm supposed to be able to take care of the family and the house and have a job and be a super... Superwoman. Superwoman, <laughs> energetic, never tired or cranky, and always looking fabulous. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, you just reminded me, actually. I remember um, growing up that I, I always said to my mother, oh, I was the eldest of two, and... Um, when cleaning came, the chores were, were when we were very young, we had to. Again, I think it's probably a cultural thing, but we had to do it early on. And my mother was working, single parent working outside. And I remember saying, Isn't there someone who does this? <laughs> Realizing it's actually me. <laughs> but, um, but now it's, it's funny how I, my mind is you grow up and you think, Okay, no, it, we have to do everything. And I got to the point of being thinking, I have to be superwoman and in, trying to embrace all of this stuff. And then I'm thinking now, that was absolutely ridiculous. Why did I spend time trying to, as I was older, trying to be everything and everyone, every, I think it's the 80s. I think it may have been the 80s that did that to us, the media. I think so. Um, <laughs> I think it was but, the 80s. Um, <laughs> Although the 80s is a great decade for dancing, but. <laughs> oh, I've done it. <laughs> I, that was a whole thing. I'm about Sorry, 10 go. years older than you, so. <laughs> right, okay, well. I, I, it's funny how you can appreciate things after the fact. I, I, was, I, saw, that. I saw that. But I, I know I realised, um, I was saying the other day, I think it may have come from the films I used to watch in the 80s telling me that women need to do all this. And Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Films, parents, grandparents. Yes, yeah, uh, Everything that we, the commercials, like if you go read, if you look at really old adverts from the 50s, It'll make your skin, skin crawl. What yes. what was portrayed? <laughs> and but even even though we say that we're past that, I remember when I got a cleaning lady, um, I felt like I had to justify it. That was so hard for me. Right? It's yeah. like oh, people are going to think that I can't keep my house. I'm like, well, it's a giant house. I'm not cleaning it. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I, I remember. Well, like. It's not that, it doesn't feel like that long ago for me, really, if I'm honest, but it's either trying to tidy up before they get here <laughs> yeah. or um, apologising to them for the, for the, the situation. Um, and it wasn't that bad, probably, but I think it's also, again, that goes back to judgment, doesn't it, really? You're paying someone to do a, do a service for you. Yeah. Um, and actually, they are probably in their zone of genius. I mean, the one I have definitely is. Right. And, um, yes. And Sorry. I'm even though, even though people don't believe it, the, I know people who love cleaning. So if people love cleaning, oh my gosh, let them have at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm finding it easier the more I do it. But yes, <laughs> the more I allow her to, That's to do excellent. things. That's <laughs> excellent. So when you're t when you're taking people through your program, do you find the mindset is where people struggle the most? Um, or what do you find is something you see common? That's a good people, question. Yeah. I, th I think mindset is, is very important. Um, I'm just thinking of the one, uh, one particular client of mine at the moment. Um, it, does, it does go back. Again, there's a lot of judgment mindset, neg negative thing. She's, but she's an ideal client in that she does everything you choose all to do at, in the legal <laughs> side, if you see what I mean. Yeah. But I, I would, yeah. Um, but no, I think it is, it is constant mindset. It is growth. The growth part is hard. Um, seizing power is a module that we have in, in it. And I think that can be very difficult, particularly when your environment is very different to where you see yourself um, and your associations. If you don't have a community um, and if it's 
if what's being asked of you is very different to the, the world you're presented with in that moment. I, I appreciate that I've gone through a lot of, and I'm, I'm sure I will still continue to do a lot of personal development myself, um, but I think that it's like an elastic band really, isn't it? You start pulling it a little bit, and then it's slightly easier the next time you do it. But if, you're, if it's completely foreign to you, um, and the one client I'm thinking about, I know I've worked with her in a traditional sense before, um, but she was so open to, to doing this with me because she appreciate, you know, she understands, she appreciates it and sees where she can go. Um, but I just think it's, it is constant work. It is going back to the mindset and kind of like revising things. Right, um, yeah. yeah. Rehearsing. Editing. I think that's what it is. <laughs> yes, editing. <laughs> and it's true that um, the, when you're trying to change something, you, it does take it takes work because you you have old habits so you have if you're trying to change something um you can't always just say okay now i'm going to do it like this and it's you're good you're done so i i like the fact that there is and this is why i'm a coach as people are trying to change their habits it's help them i'm sure that you do the same helping them stay on track and when when they fall down don't let them stay down <laughs> you know it's okay we can do this yeah. let's go yes yeah, like accountability challenging challenging them is really right? important yeah i think so oh my goodness sorry i had to cough for a second there no, <clears throat> so yes it's um and i find everything everything in life is you have to start with and it's such a big buzzword these days but i'm going to use it anyway everything in life starts with mindset right it's because um if you believe it's going to trip if you believe this will happen then it probably will if you believe you're good then you'll be good if you believe you're bad then you'll be bad if you believe you will succeed you will succeed um so I think that just that mindset aspect of it, it's never perfect, as you said, you just keep working on it. But at least uh, when I talk about people making decisions to do things, the first thing you need to be is aware that you need, the, aware that, of what's going on. And like you were talking earlier, that story in your head, right? <laughs> yeah. I know you're, I, I, I see you struggling with your computer there. It's all good. This yeah, is real. This is Thank the you. this is the real life podcast, where not everything works perfectly, which is super. Um, so, where can people find your legacy transformation program? Okay, so thank you for asking. It's um, Miss McMediator. So www.missmcmediator.com slash lawpreneur. And that's where my newer services are, less traditional legal services. Um, right. I'm, I'm also the horse lawyer as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I also awesome. use that for those as well. So yeah, so there's also a website there which directs you to the same place. What so. does the horse lawyer do? Oh, it could be a, a lot of vari variety. I, uh, today, in fact, today I had a, a matter which was in court yesterday, um, and that was to do with a sale of a horse, but it could be um, anti-doping issues, it could be um, a variety of a host of things, competi competition issues. But a lot of the equestrians I find um, internationally are also very cliquey, and that means that they don't seek legal advice when they need to. And they could be 50 years, as, this, as a lady is who I'm working with at the moment, 50 years of equestrian experience, an expert in their field. Uh, I had a police officer another day, and they didn't, they didn't unfortunately, um, this is a recurrent theme, I could be using anyone's name here. Yeah. Um, they trust too much, and unfortunately, things are not as nice and bright as we would like to think, and so the disputes arise. Oh, that's too bad. But it's, Sorry. I think that's an awesome niche you've got there, the horse lawyer. <laughs> and Thank you. friends, if you didn't catch the website, don't worry. We're going to put in the show notes for you, right? Thank you very we'll much. We'll totally, 
totally take care of that so they can find you. And um, yes, don't put your head in the sand <laughs> about your law, uh, about your legal empowerment. Um, but, and before you go, before you go, because we're going to uh, um, put all that in the show notes, but before you leave, I am super interested in a final word of wisdom from you or two. Thank you. I, one thing I would like communities to know is that courts, sorry, I'm sorry about that, courts aren't the only option, that you have options. Get the informed um, areas. You get, get informed, basically. Look at all your options and then just decide whether you want to take action or not. That's awesome. Thank you. Yes. Know, know all your options before you have to dive into court, right? Absolutely. Oh my goodness, so true. Thank you so much, Cynthia, for joining me. Thank you for sharing your awesome knowledge with us and your, your program sounds fabulous. So anyone who's not sure about those things, definitely go check that out. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you so much. My <laughs> pleasure. And friends in podcast land, you take care of yourselves, take care of your personal power, and I will see you next time. See you soon. Hi, my friend. Thanks so much for listening to this entire podcast. If you found it useful and you're like me and you like, like helping others, please feel free to share this. Just give it a like. Give it a comment. If you found something useful in it, there's a chance that someone else will find something useful as well. Also, if you have any questions at all, I can absolutely help and I would love to help you can email me at heather at prosperityflowcoaching.com if you want more of this awesome content you can follow me on instagram heather stewart coaching you can follow me on facebook prosperity flow coaching and I have a personal request I want to help as many people as I can with these podcasts and if you could give me a review hopefully a good one <laughs> if you could share if you could send this out into the world I would truly appreciate it. I hope you have an amazing day and I hope that you find your way to wellness by getting back to me. Take care, my friend. <laughs>